fucking around until you stop this. my channel. I'm Nikki and this is That's What She Grows. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to be propagating some boat lily. There's a few things that you're going to need when you're doing a propagation. One is going to be a pair of scissors, shears, anything that's relatively sharp. I like sharp objects. Another thing that you're going to need as well is a propagation station as you see here or any kind of vase will work, a cup, glass, Basically anything that holds water you can use. As you'll see here, I have these propagation stations made. These are made out of a pine wood which is very light. They are stained. I went and just bought some test tubes off of Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive. In Canada, they were like $17 for, let's see, 20 of them. In particular, my propagation station, I got my friend Mike to make for me. And it did take a couple of days. So, as you can see here, my propagation station already has water in it. You want to fill them relatively to the top. The reason why you want to fill up most of the way is because there is going to be evaporation, especially during the warm summer months. We're going to be turning this into this. So, this is the Trade Scantus Bethacea. We're going to be propagating this today because, as you can tell, this is getting really leggy and I don't necessarily like that. The purple is not nearly as vibrant as this one due to this one being in low light conditions. Well, it, it wasn't even in low light. This one was in a medium indirect light in my kitchen and it just wasn't enough light. This one is sitting right in the south facing window. As you can tell, this one is much brighter purple whereas the larger mother plant here has gotten very leggy I want to cut this back and propagate it so that it can get more bushy and develop more purple. I really like it when they have the deep purple in them. The first thing that I want to do is I want to remove any dead leaves from the plant. Any dead or dying leaves are really not going to be producing any chlorophyll. The plant will basically just be taking the nutrients from those leaves. But something with as much foliage as this, that's not really necessary to leave those on there. And some of them are completely completely brown. And as you can tell here, I'm not even using my scissors. These just pop off pretty easy. Once they get to be really dry, they just come right off. good. It looks like there's no more dead leaves on there. So I'm going to get into cutting my plant. You're going to want to use your sharp, sharp shears. You're going to want to use sharp shears. Mine are pink. Because pink is life. And there's multiple different parts of this that you can basically propagate, but you want to do it at one of the nodes. You'll notice that there's multiple nodes along the stem. I'm going to cut near the bottom because I want this plant to become quite bushy. I'm just going to cut this whole thing right off. What I like to do in this part, like you, at each of these different nodes where the leaf is coming out, you can actually make this into multiple different propagations. I'm just going to be using the tips in particular because they're the prettiest part. I'm going to allow this to have two nodes, one right here and then the top one there. Cut maybe an inch below the bottom node and then we're going to just take that leaf right off because that's going to be under water and the leaf is just going to rot away you don't want the water to get rotten and all the roots are just going to come out of that node anyways what I'm going to be doing is as you can see here it's a couple inches this is probably like five inches long something like that and you want to put the node in the water and make sure that it's submersed the whole time you have it. And then you're going to just want to do this as many times with your plant that you would like, that makes you happy. And once again here we have this. I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. 
and take off the bottom stem. I'm going to take off the bottom two stems because they're quite close together and then that's going to give me more roots in the soil. Depending on your plants, you can have one plant per test tube. I'm going to be putting two plants per test tube because these two plants are going to be potted up together. I don't mind if the roots get entangled, they're going to be potted all right together. And then we'll probably just fast forward this part here so that you can watch me finish those propagations. Somewhere that's not too warm because you don't want the water to evaporate. As well as you want to give these plants some time to pr produce some roots. So everywhere that I've made a cut on this plant, it will grow back slowly but surely. No worries about that. Each of the nodes you cut from will have new growth coming through. You'll have, you know, one or two more stems that will pop out, making this plant much more bushy in the long run. Because this plant was left in some dim light, I'm going to put this somewhere that has a lot more light to make it a lot darker purple and to make it darker green. I want to make this a darker green and more purple. Purple. Purple! Different house plants will take different times to produce roots. These ones give it like a week or two. Really any trade scantia are really easy to propagate. You want to wait until your plants have about two inches of roots before you even want to put this into soil. Give it a lot of time, it is perfectly fine if the roots go really crazy. For example, right here I have some sweet potato vine because I also do vegetables. This has been propagating for, I would say about a month. This one is absolutely full of roots as well, this is a champagne flute. So you can see you can propagate really in anything. If it holds water, you can grow <laughs> roots in that. I love this one. This is going to be going in my grow tent over winter and I'm going to be growing sweet potatoes while there's snow outside here in Canada. A. Eh? As another example, here we have a neon pothos. This one is in a champagne flute as well. I used a similar method. I took off the bottom leaves. This one does have a very minute aerial root. Within the nodes, this will produce roots within a couple of weeks. I will not be planting this into the soil for about a month though. Getting back to the tree Scantia spathacea. These ones will grow roots faster than most other plants. And they're very hardy, they'll basically go through anything, they're nearly a weed. Hey, how do you like my tree Scantia? Spathacea. 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 When it comes time to pot these in the soil, Really, any kind of soil is good for the trade scantia spathacea. You can use regular garden soil, house soil. I get the baked garden soil. I usually use ProMix. I find that it doesn't really have any bugs in it, uh, which is great when you're having plants in your house. I like to use these tiny little pots. I have dozens of them. I buy them in bulk when they're on sale. So if you found this video informative, let me know. I want to see your propagations, tag me it on Instagram, I want to see you before and after if you have any questions about it and specific different plants you're trying to propagate, how to propagate them and if you can propagate them. Leave me a comment, send me a message, I'm more than happy to answer that. I also love propagating Sansevieria, that one takes two months before you'll even get roots so the trade scantias are definitely a good start they'll propagate much easier than the San Siberias or things such as that. My favorite hobby is probably propagating my plants. I cannot buy a plant without cutting it apart. I let it sit for a while and then I propagate it. 
This is why I have uh, like 170 plants in my house. So stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to be doing Never Have I Ever Plant Tuber Edition. I'm so excited about this one. I've seen other people doing it. I cannot wait to jump on this train. This is going to be some tea. So follow with me. We're going to have that one up next Monday. And I hope you guys come and join us on this adventure. Also, don't forget to participate in our giveaway. If you want more information, I did another video on that, or the information is in the description. Thank you so much for checking my videos, and always don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch my previous videos, and my future videos, and all my videos. I'll see you all next Monday. Okay.